LeBron, and this video is like your question, your mark, your first video challenge. Just glycerin, just like by cooking glycerin, you get this awesome fog. I'm Andrew Braun, and this video is for the Your Question, Your Mark, University of Dayton video challenge. If I had the choice to explore one question, it would definitely have to be, what type of applications will lasers be performing in the future, and how may they be beneficial to society? I share a strong interest in lasers, as both a laser enthusiast and hobbyist. My interest in laser technology really began to take off last summer during my summer internship at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I was given the opportunity to work in the turbine engine fatigue facility in the propulsion directorate through the Wright Scholar Program. Through the Wright Scholar Program, I was presented with the opportunity to tour several labs around Air Force Research Laboratories that incorporated laser technology into defense mechanisms to keep our country safe. I was also able to be part of many tours through the Wright's, Wright State University, Ohio State University, and the University of Dayton in which I further explored innovative laser technology. To be able to explore what lasers will be accomplishing in the future, we need to study what kind of applications lasers are performing now. Photonic computing is one aspect of laser technology that is looking extremely promising in the future of computational techniques. Photonic computing in a nutshell basically involves using photons from an infrared laser and computer circuitry rather than electrons. This technique has many advantages over using electrons. For one, there is no resistance for photons, meaning that there is much less heat given off due to, due to inefficiencies in the circuit design. Many difficulties that engineers face when designing computers, laptops, smartphones, or gaming consoles is pulling the heat off important circuitry before it becomes damaged. With photonic computing, heat sinking certain circuitry would be a problem of the past. Engineers would be able to make processing units much faster and with the ability to cram them into smaller devices like smartphones. This here is an Xbox 360 motherboard. I used to repair Xbox 360s, so I have a few of these lying around that I wasn't able to fix. I'm sure most of you have owned Xbox 360s and maybe some of you have even had them break. The problem that plagues most Xbox 360s is the red ring of death. This problem is uh, due to inefficient techniques to dissipate heat off the central processing unit and the graphics processing unit. The PS3 also has something similar to it which causes it to fail. These problems will become a thing of the past with photonic computing. Right now for nuclear power we are dependent upon nuclear fission which is the splitting apart of plutonium or uranium atoms for energy means. Nuclear power can have some negative connotations. It can bring to mind accidents at Three Mile Island and Chernobyl where nuclear fallout resulted in thousands of deaths. It's also a controversial energy source for hostile nations and produces a lot of radioactive waste. Fusion, however, is the opposite of fission. Instead of breaking atoms apart, fusion puts atoms together. Fusion also has many advantages over fission. There is little or no radiation given off during fusion and it almost has zero radioactive waste. So what do lasers have to do with obtaining a sustainable nuclear fission, fusion as an energy source. Well, right now at Livermore, California, scientists at the National Ignition Facility are using high-powered laser systems that span the building of several football fields to start a nuclear fusion reaction. By converging 192 separate beams of ultraviolet light equating to more than 1 million joules of energy on a single canister the size of a pencil eraser with hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, scientists are able to create fusion burn. Scientists hope one day sustainable fusion will be an energy source of the future. Lasers in many ways are helping to keep both our country and our soldiers safe. With hostile nations beginning to develop and test nuclear weapons, intercontinental ballistic missile defense is becoming a necessity for the security of our nation. Boeing has already begun to develop airborne laser labs to intercept these missiles and destroy them before they reach their destinations. So how does this work? 
To begin, there are six infrared sensors around the plane that detect what direction the missile is by its heat signature. The first laser fires that covers a wide view of the missile. Some of the light reflects back and is received by sensors on board the aircraft that gives us the aircraft, the location, altitude, destination, and speed of the missile. A second laser then fires, which gives a precise fixture on the missile. Finally, the laser cannon fires, which focuses most of its energy on the fuel tank of the missile, destroying it. I remember earlier that through the Wright Scholar Program, that I was privileged to tour several labs around Air Force Research Laboratories. One of the labs that I was able to view was part of the sensors directory. In this particular lab, they were developing laser defense systems from military aircraft that are used to deliver supplies in hostile areas. Most surface-to-air missiles are heat-seeking. One way to combat heat-seeking missiles is to use flares, but flares can cause unwanted fires in populated areas. Lasers are once again proving themselves worthy on the battlefield. By using high-powered infrared lasers, the aircraft is able to steer the said missile off course. Research for future defense laser technology is going on right now. Most of it, I'm sure, is top secret, so who really knows what lasers will be forming in the future? But needless to say, with future developments of laser defense technology, it would certainly make our country and our soups a bit safer. Laser technology is also beginning to excel in many medical fields of research. Low-level energy therapy is one aspect of laser technology that is making a lot of headroom in the field of medicine. Low-level laser therapy can be used for tissue regeneration by stimulation cells to produce their own healing abilities, improve blood circulation, and build up one's immune system. Laser technologies also make a lot of groundbreaking discoveries in cancer care. By injecting a solution around the cancer colony, doctors are able to make the cancer more sensitive to light. And by applying photodynamic therapy, doctors are able to seriously reduce and remove the cancer colony. Lasers are also used during surgery as a scalpel due to their high precision cuts and ability to cauterize capillaries. Laser eye surgery is another truly amazing application of laser technology, which involves reshaping the cornea of the eye with the laser. Possibilities are endless to what laser technology can bring to medical research. What will lasers have to offer in the field of medicine in the future? Who knows, but I intend on finding out and being a part of the research myself. Okay, for the entire video, I've had several of these devices laying out. Each of them has a perfectly good explanation for being on the table. The Xbox 360 drive is here because, because I used to repair Xbox 360s. This drive specifically had something break on it. I was challenged to find out what had broken on it and how to fix it. However, during the investigation, instead of fixing the drive, I learned about the inner optics and how lasers read information off this. The same thing, the same thing happened with my PS3 Blu-ray drive. After failing to fix it, I decided to build a laser pointer out of the 405 nanometer Blu-ray laser diode inside the drive. Unfortunately, my first laser pointer build failed miserably, but I was determined to start anew. I did a lot of research on how lasers work and began to purchase new parts online with my own money. This is the laser driver I built which powers the 405 nanometer Blu-ray laser diode at 100 milliwatts. These are the batteries I'm using for the laser. They are lithium ion batteries that I was able to pull out an old laptop battery pack. 100 milliwatts is a lot of power for a laser pointer, and many dangers are associated with high power laser pointers if not used responsibly. That's why I invested in these laser eye protection. I was able to create some of the effects you saw in the beginning with various laser pointers. So how will I continue to explore laser technology, and what steps will I take to answer how lasers will be beneficial to society in the future? For one, I have access to meet and converse with real determined scientists around AFRL and possibly tour several world-class laser labs. I would also like to travel to the National Ignition Facility out in California to gain first-hand knowledge of how lasers are producing nuclear fusion. I'm also determined to continue to enjoy my hobby of building high-powered lasers. However, I believe the only way to truly find out what laser technology will bring to the future is to develop the technology myself.